I am using some transfer punches to lay out some hole locations for both the Spark Fun beefcakes we're going to use for this project, as well as the Arduino and some room for a little breadboard. It's not necessary per se, but um, you'll see it'll it'll make the project look really nice, and it's going to offer some safety in my opinion because these parts are going to be securely mounted, and there's not going to be any risk that they short out because they get bumped around. Um, and you know, I like metalworking. And so if this kind of stuff interests you, whether it's the Arduinos or fabrication or layout and CNC machining, well, uh, definitely subscribe to my channel. Lots of stuff like that, uh, both to come and in the past videos I've put out. We are going to powder coat this little base plate and, and here's why. It's a great way to protect this thing. It's a non-conductive layer, which I like. It'll make it last. And it's so easy to do. If you're interested, I've got two different videos you, here you can see below on how to powder coat at home. One with an air compressor, one without an air compressor. It's quick, it's fast, it's cheap, and it's durable. And that's a rare set of uh, trifecta plus durable, if you will, uh, that we don't see a lot. Okay, part is powder coated out of the oven, cooled off. Let's throw our three beefcakes on here and the Arduino, and then we will hop into the Arduino code. Before we screw them down, actually, I'll just show I have snapped all the extra leads off of the beefcakes, especially on the relay. And then you want to use something that's an insulator. I've got a lot of these rubber washers laying around, uh, rubber bumpers, anything like that works. And I'm going to sandwich that in between the beefcake and the powder coated board. Even though it's powder coated, which itself is a type of insulator, I want something uh, more insulating so that there's no chance this is going to arc or short through. Okay, take a quick peek, just make sure everything looks okay. I'll square it up a little bit. Definitely nothing close to shorting out or touching even the powder coat. Let's take a look at the Arduino code. If you would like to use this or download it, it will be available on the NYC CNC website under Wednesday Widget. You'll see it listed as the Whitney Arduino Punch Project. Two other products we're going to use while we're here in Firefox. We're going to use the Beefcake Relay Control Kit from SparkFun. It is $8, and it's pretty great. Up to 20 amps at 220 volts. That's awesome. However, it's not, it's not without some peril. You do need to realize what they discuss here, which is it, the board itself, they mentioned it can only handle 8 amps. So again, got to be careful um, to make sure you stay within the limits and to understand if you go exceed those limits, what's going to happen? Is someone going to get hurt? Is something going to fall on somebody? Is something going to catch fire, etc.? Beefcakes are great. They are, again, though, they have exposed connectors which can short out and can you know, hurt somebody. So another option, if you'd like to be safer, is something like a power tail switch. Now, this one is better meant for 110 volt devices that have a three prong connector. You can connect your Arduino right here and plug this into the machine. So for instance, if you wanted to say, turn on and off a toaster with an Arduino or a vacuum cleaner, this is a great product for that because you're not messing with household current or high amp current where you're gonna sh potentially shock yourself. Okay, Arduino code. I like to bank through this stuff pretty quick. We define a number of integers here. The pedal, uh, we have two different pedals. The up pedal is pin two, down pedal is pin three pedal states we just make create as hold, holding place integers and then we've got three beefcakes they're on six seven and eight up is for up down is for down and then this is the number eight wire on the machine it's coincidentally eight pin on the arduino and that's the one that turns on both for up and down we define those as outputs and inputs as is appropriate and then the real code is quite simple if the up pedal is pushed down, and by push down, that's low. I'll go over that when we look at the hardware here in a minute. And the other pedal is off. Then we want to say, okay, you're saying the up is pushed, so then we want to send the beefcake for the up position to high. That turns that on. And then we want to make sure the down one is off. That's just, just a, a safety me mechanism. And then the both one goes up as well, high as well. We have a serial print line here to debug. Down is just the exact opposite. We make sure the up one is low, and we make sure the down beefcake is high, and again, the both way is high, print down. This will happen frequently, which is when neither pedal is pressed. 
which includes when you would let off the pedal to stop it. And that's an important point. So when that happens, I have um, the down, up, and both ways all turning off or going low. And then I have a delay of 25 in here. That's 1 400th of a second, just sort of a debounce, and it just slows the Arduino down when neither pedal are pressed. Uh, doesn't, uh, not necessary. You wouldn't want to put a delay of a second in there because then it would take up to a second for the Arduino to see that you have pushed a pedal and start the down or up stroke. Here is our little circuit board. So let's take a look at this. Uh, first off, why use beef cakes? I really like them. They're a great little board. Um, they're inexpensive, like I just showed on the website. They're very powerful, and they include what you, the things that I think you need. And remember, a Arduino doesn't output enough strength or current to directly control a big old relay like this. So you have to use a transistor anyways. So these things already come with nice terminal blocks, the transistor that lets you control this. So by the way, what that really means is the Arduino has a tiny switch in it. That tiny switch is only strong enough to control something like this transistor. That transistor then is able to control a bigger switch like this relay. So you're really using sort of three switches here. Um, but it's got the transistor, it's got the uh, diode and resistors as one would need. It's got a nice light that tells you when it's on or off. And then like I said, the terminal block. So I really like these for eight bucks. If you want to take safety to another level, and I wouldn't blame you at all, or if you have another project, these power tail switches are great. I really recommend them. They're not great for this project because they're meant more for 120 household applications. So like if you wanted to turn on, as I just mentioned, an, uh, a toaster oven or a vacuum cleaner, um, go with these. They're totally sealed, so much less chance of shocking yourself. If you touch the bottom of one of these boards, you can absolutely shock yourself. Anyways, I like them. Let's talk about the layout. These work with ground, the control pin from the Arduino, like a digital out pin, and then five volts. So what I've done is five volts and ground on Arduino, our daisy chain through to each one, and then we've got pins six, seven, and eight, as you just saw in the code. Pin six is the green one, goes to our first connector, seven to the middle, eight is the blue, goes all the way over here. I'm sure everyone's with me at this point. The only thing remotely close to complicated are our foot pedals. And I'll zoom out here in a minute so you can see them better. We've got two foot pedals, and they each just have two leads, and when you push the foot pedal down, those leads are shorted together. Pretty standard switch. So how are we doing this with an Arduino? We've got the blue wire off the switch, and it is going via a 10K resistor to this row here, which goes directly to pin two on our Arduino. That's our control pin. You could also just take this resistor and plug it straight from here into pin two, but I'm using it here because we're also going to pull this high with 100K to five volts that traces back to here. The other lead of the switch is the yellow one. It is simply pulled to ground via this gray jumper, which goes over to the blue one to ground. That's it. Same thing on the other switch, which is just a repeat. Again, you can use the same ground for the yellow, the same row of the breadboard, if you will. And then the blue one has the 10K, which I ju jump all the way over here to pin three. And then off that same row, it gets pulled high to five volts with 100K. That's all it is. So we'll zoom out and you can see we've got two switches. Now, this is another safety thing. Most people would say any foot switch would, should be covered. I only had a, one covered one laying around. So that's gonna be my down for now. And if I like this and it works out, I'll replace both with a covered, but this will be my up. And that's, I'm okay with that. It's the, um, it would be the way this, the Whitney punch is very difficult to get your finger in there where you would shear a finger if you fell or something fell on one of these. You still want to be safe though. So I will definitely replace this with the covered one. But just to show you, when we push the down foot pedal, we have two come on and they go off right when you let up. That's important. And then the, this one is eight. So that should stay on for both. So we should now see these two light up. Let me turn off my light here so you can see it better. So boom, boom. It's very, very important that you see that these are snappy and coming off because you, you want to make sure that the machine stops as soon as you let off the foot pedal. Let's go hook it up. Hookup is actually pretty easy. If you remember, all we have to do is short five, that was the common, to either six or seven, depending on whether we want to go up or down, 
and then in both cases also to eight. So what I did was I took the uh, what I did was I took cable number five and with a wire nut. I gave I put three leads on here, and each of those leads connects to one side of each of our Spark Fun beef cakes. And then it's simple. The other side of the beefcake terminal, this is again what the relay would close when you activate it, is pin five, excuse me, pin six, is pin six, pin seven, and then pin eight for both. So if we look again, and as you remember when we were testing it on the bench, this pin eight will always activate, and then whether you go up or down dictates which one of these go. So we've got that. Um, so we've got that all hooked up. You want to make sure you don't have exposed wires. You really want to be careful here so you don't have anything arc or short. Um, you normally would never want to run a device like this with the cabinet open just because uh, you, know, you don't want a fuse to blow when you're sitting in front of it or whatnot. I'm only doing this for demonstration purposes. I am wearing safety glasses, absolutely. Um, you want to wear them anyways when you're running a punch like this. Uh, as a kid, I remember uh, a log fell on our old Massey Ferguson tractor and pinched a hydraulic line on the front end loader and it blew that line. And uh, when you learn, you learn at a young age when you get hot hydraulic fluid uh, coming at you at a pretty high rate of speed that this isn't stuff to mess around with. These lines are up to 5,000 PSI. So this is not child's play. Anyways, let's turn the machine on here and see if she works. Well, here goes nothing. Turn on our phase converter. By the way, I will make a shameless pitch that I am now an American Rotary three-phase dealer. So if any of you are looking to add three-phase to your shop, I'd be happy to help you out with a quote. Phase converter's on. Machine is on. Okay. Down. <laughs> Up. Oh, she works. Oh, that's awesome. Let's try a part. A little piece of quarter inch hot rolled. Amazing, another hole. Folks, that is so nice to be able to hold the part and focus and look and not have to deal with this, I think, clunky switch. I am really excited. This is the, uh, this is the best Arduino tool or the best tool I've ever made myself. And, uh, and to think that they wanted, you know, 1600 bucks. And again, maybe it's more robust. Maybe I'll find that this causes some sort of a problem. Um, but this is awesome. I'm going to uh, tidy this stuff up to get it inside the enclosure here so this is a more robust solution. Uh, connect the foot switches permanently, uh, and this is gonna be a great add to the shop. So, with that said, um, I love Arduino. I love making parts. I, I love making these videos. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. If you do, the thumbs up, the comments, the shares, the likes. Check us out on Facebook. Uh, check us out on Instagram. Uh, you guys can tell I'm really excited right now. I'm really glad this worked. And uh, well, that's a wrap for today, folks. I'll see you next Wednesday. Take care.